What is going on guys? We are here today to take a look at the Trial of the Abyss. Now you guys have been leveling up. A lot of you guys are hitting level 240. So I thought it was the appropriate time to show you the team that I took to go all the way from floors 1 to 300. I never changed the team except for one unit got rotated in and out. That was it. So thank you for being here. I'm going to have the team right up in front for you guys throughout this video so you can see it in action. I'm going to have, I think, the floors like 290 to 300 going so you can see exactly what it does. If you guys don't know what the Trial of the Abyss is, as you go through the AFK stages, you clear that 1125 stage. That's currently the last stage that we have. You are presented with the Trial of the Abyss, and this is a tower that you clear the floors and it slowly extends as time goes on. The beginning of the tower is relatively easy. If you cleared AFK stage 1125, you go into the Trials of the Abyss, you hit that tower, you start clearing it out, you'll notice you won't have that much of an issue. You're going to progress to a point in the trial where you're going to have to manually start activating some alts of these characters. And this team you see here were the key that took me from 1 to 300. I autoed it at the beginning started manually playing around the high mid 200s and i am now here with 300 floors cleared i do have high investment in od for example but brutus isn't even mythic plus yet so this is something that you don't need all these pieces to be mythic plus to clear this mythic plus does help it's not necessarily needed it will take you a little trial and error on positioning of some of these floors but i promise you you can get there with this team. This involves placement and this involves how this team functions, which I'll talk about in a moment. It involves switching between two artifacts specifically. Rotating between the two can make or break certain floors and just really spacing out when you need to accelerate your ults with Rowan. And that unit that I talked about that I switched with Rowan is Coco. Switching these two in and out when needed, it's insane. You're getting the Mauler bonus. You are going to be raising your ults with Rowan and what that does is it allows healing with Smokey, Brutus and Entendra stun and become invulnerable. This allows you to as you place them around the board and you go into these floors they can eat the mechanics especially Brutus he becomes invulnerable with that shield all those deadly mechanics that will wipe your team normally he's just ignoring he's just invulnerable spinning around doing his thing giving your team time to charge up their ults which is why Rowan is so great because you get to the ult faster he's that battery for your team he activates his skill everybody's ults go up and you're just good to go one of the key factors to actually clearing the floors i would say is Odie for myself having the ability to pick who you're ulting you'll see in this footage of the floors in the background there's times where you see that the autoplay is turned off Odie specifically is being used to target the unit in the back row that is dealing the most damage to my units. This allows me to get the biggest damage dealer out of the way. You have Brutus and Tondra tanking the front line. You have Smokey healing starting to apply that DOT debuff. And then Odie starts to execute. Odie's execute does come at Mythic Plus. So if you're thinking what of these units might need a little high investment, the Mythic Plus Odie with that execute when their HP reaches a certain threshold makes a world of difference. I cannot tell you how many floors all the way from 1 to 300 Odie was the last one standing and he just executed the last unit or it was like a chain fire of just one, two, three, four, five. It would refill. He'd fire it off. Odie's mythic plus skill is so, so valuable in this, especially if you don't have other units. That key skill of Odie is going to immediately defeat poison enemies when their HP falls below a certain limit which is equal to 5.2 times the base damage dealt by dart poison each second. Each time a poison enemy hero is defeated, the limit is increased times the base damage. Why this is so crazy is if you look at Odie's ulti, Odie's ulti corrosive dart says it fires a corrosive dart dealing 150% damage and dart poison to the enemy. Poison target will receive 30% damage every second until defeated. The dart poison cannot be dispelled. It's very good. It's doing damage. It's sticking along. It's corrosive dealing poison damage. But the key here is at level 2, Odie gains 600 energy when a poisoned enemy is defeated, and only 200 energy if it is a summoned unit. As Odie goes and stacks up poison damage and constantly fires at the enemies in these Trial of Abyss floors, you'll see that snake go around the enemy when you have that Mythic Plus skill unlocked. That will kind of snap, that will execute the enemy. Because you ulted, you're now getting refunded energy and you'll fire off corrosive darts at the next target. You'll see the poison stack up and you'll start seeing this chain of this execute snake going around each of the enemies, all while the rest of your team is frontlining with the damage reduction from Coco, with the healing and the tanking abilities of these front lines of Smokey, 
Brutus and Tundra. It felt like a way for me to clear these floors when I probably shouldn't be able to in terms of the teams because sometimes a floor would absolutely just destroy me and i would look at the recommended teams that other people were using and i didn't have a lot of those units barely any investment some of them were celestial units it said that people were using and everybody was using the same team and i thought well i don't have that and i thought you know what i can make this work with this team i'm gonna try to force this team it was already doing good in the beginning of the trial of the abyss but i wanted to extend it and see if i could push to that 300 mark and then beyond so it does take you there if you can get used to kind of manually playing with od firing off at the right targets allowing your team set up to protect od and just kind of progress from there the second piece of this was the two artifacts you're going to be using the star shard spell and the confining spell those are the only two artifacts that i use throughout this whole trial of the abyss clear up to 300 just back and forth between confining and the star shard spell sometimes you need to do that aoe damage slow down the attack speed of the enemies Sometimes the enemies are trying to flood your team and you need to use that confining spell to keep them in place so they don't swarm your team before your team can set up. There are times that I saw if I didn't have the confining spell on and I used the star shard spell, Rowan couldn't even get his ulti off to get everybody going before the enemies just literally pounced on everyone and they were gone. Like within milliseconds, the whole team was just deleted. The positioning was off, the confining spell wasn't triggering, the enemies were able to move forward, my team was gone, and it just sucked. So make sure if you're struggling, if you feel like you're right at the brink of a floor of Trial of the Abyss and you just can't push past it, and you feel like your team is just barely dying, you're just barely getting to that last enemy and they have a little bit of HP left and you almost clear it and then it fails, try flipping around your artifacts. See if that helps between the two. See if it makes a difference. And it usually... What I found came down to positioning is just insane. You have to make sure your units are positioned in a way to protect and stagger the mechanics of the enemies. You also need to make sure you have that correct artifact on. And then third, if you are manually firing, for me it was Odie, if you're manually firing a damage skill off to try to deal with a specific character, you have to pay attention to what unit on the enemy side is like being extremely detrimental to your team. There's just one character that like an ult comes out and it just wipes your team off. They may need to go first. You might need to target them first, get them off the board and see how your team reacts once that unit is out of play. Other ways I found this out is I let these stages finish. You can see the damage numbers at the end. So if you die and you get the defeat screen, you can click that damage number you can see who is pumping the hardest who on the enemy team is just absolutely the menace that you need to take care of so you can target it that way as well i hope you guys enjoyed the quick little coverage of the team that i used to take me from floors one two three hundred in the trials of the abyss i'm sure as i approach floor 400 i'm gonna have a more in-depth guide because i'm expecting this to just get harder and harder as the floors go on so let me know what you think down below in the description are you in the trial of the abyss currently are you about to get there if you are in it what floor are you on let me know down below i'll see you guys in the next afk journey video peace